In this video, I'm going to show you how to record professional sounding vocals with the Apollo Twin. Step number one is to connect your Apollo to your computer, and if you haven't done so, go to Universal Audio's official website and download the console app. Step number two is to connect your microphone to one of the inputs on the Apollo, and if you're using a condenser mic, click on the 48 volt switch to power on your microphone. Step number three is to set up your DAW. I'll be using Logic Pro, but you can follow along with any DAW. Just create a new project, then create an audio track. Pay attention to the input number, it should be the same one as you plugged your microphone into the Apollo. Then, if your DAW has this function, go into the settings and enable low latency monitoring. Next, this is very important, don't forget to mute your audio track because we're going to be monitoring the signal from the console app and if you forget to do so, you're going to hear a doubled signal which can be quite distracting. Step number four is to create an awesome vocal chain. Even though the Apollo has great sounding built-in preamps, chances are you bought one because you want to use universal audio plugins. So to do that, pull up the console app and on the left side, you're going to see your channel strip. Here's where you're going to insert all of your effects. The first plugin we're going to be using is the 610B preamp and you're going to insert that under the input section. This is going to change the impedance of the signal and make the Apollo react like a real tube preamp. For the settings, I like to crank up the tubes all the way up. This way you get some of that tube saturation and warmthness added to the sound. Next, I would encourage you to sing into your microphone and pay attention to the meters as you do so. They should be hitting anywhere from negative 18 to negative 8 dB. That's going to ensure that you have a healthy signal, but it's not too hot that it's going to clip. And if you need to make any adjustments, just use the level knob to control the signal. The second plugin we're going to use is the 1176 compressor. If you're unfamiliar with compression, all it is is a tool that we use to minimize the dynamics in audio and to add a little bit of character to the sound. Naturally, when we sing, you're going to notice that some parts of your performance may be louder than others, and so the 1176 is going to help tame some of those peaks. For the settings, I like to have a very slow attack and the fastest release, so the attack should be anywhere from 1 to 3, and the release all the way up. And then for the ratio, 4 to 1 is a great starting point for vocals, but feel free to experiment because this compressor goes all the way up to 20 to 1. Next, we're going to add a second compressor, but this time it's the LA-2A. This is a very different style of compression than the 1176. It's much more mellow and not as aggressive, and the goal with this compressor is just to balance the overall performance. For the settings, all you have to do is play around with the peak reduction knob until you see about 3 to 5 dB of reduction on average, and then use the other knob to compensate for the volume, and that is it, it is that easy. So you're probably asking yourself, why use two compressors? This is a trick called serial compression, which means having two compressors working half as hard as one compressor doing all the work. A big mistake I see beginners make myself included when I got started, is that I would only use one compressor and then just crank it up all the way, but that just ends up squishing the vocal and sucking the life out of the performance. But with serial compression, we have the 1176 just taming some of those peaks and the LA-2A just balancing the overall performance. Next, I found that most singers like to hear a little bit of reverb in their headphone mix, and to do that, go to the right side of the console app under the insert section, then select RealVerd Pro. Then go back to your channel strip and under the sends, you'll notice that as you start bringing up that knob, more of the reverb is going to be introduced into the signal. But don't worry, this is not going to be printed onto your track. This is just for the artist to hear in their headphones. And by the way, if you're getting value out of today's content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Once you're happy with your headphone mix, now is the time to make a very important decision. On the right side of the console app, it will give you two main recording modes. UAD record, which means you're going to hear all of these plugins in real time and they will be printed into your DAW. This is a great option, especially if you know that the sound you're listening to will be part of the final product. If you want to save some time and minimize post-production, then go with this mode. However, the mode that I prefer to record in is UAD monitoring. This means I can still hear the plugins in real time, but they don't get printed into my DAW. The biggest benefit of that mode is if I need to make changes after after the fact, it will give me the flexibility to do so in post-production. 
Once you're happy with your vocal chain, the next step is to go into your DAW, enable your track for recording, and then just press record. And if you want to take that same recording to the next level, then make sure to click on this video, and I'm going to show you how to mix your vocals.